How does a group of ordinary people from North Georgia with no construction experience get involved in a project to build bridges in Central America? It all began in early 2012 when the Reverend Chris Mullis, pastor of Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church in Dalton, Georgia, sent out a call to the churches of the Northwest District of the North Georgia Conference, including Elizabeth Lee United Methodist in Chickamauga, for volunteers for a mission to the Central American country of El Salvador. Ten people responded. In August 2012, the group began monthly planning meetings. The site chosen for our mission was Awachapan, a busy city of about 100,000 people in the mountains of western El Salvador. Team members began planning travel arrangements, updating passports, and contacting potential supporters to pray and raise money for the project. There were also church-sponsored fundraisers, such as a fish fry hosted by Jim and Cindy Toller at Elizabeth Lee United Methodist, which netted $1,900 for the trip. There were other preparations to be made as well. Medical coordinator Louise Jenkins spent many hours researching which medicines would be needed, contacting organizations which could supply them, and filling out the necessary forms to import them into El Salvador. After months of planning, team members were set apart for their mission at a consecration ceremony at Pleasant Grove, with District Superintendent Herzen and Donet speaking and leading in the dedication of the team. After the service, team members engaged in a packing party, loading medicines, supplies, and equipment into suitcases ready for shipment to El Salvador. Finally, the big day arrived. Early on a Saturday morning, June 22, 2013, the team assembled at the Chattanooga, Tennessee airport to catch their flight. But while awaiting our connecting flight in Atlanta, the excitement of our trip was broken by devastating news. The list of medicines, which had been sent to the Salvadoran government two months in advance as required, had not yet been processed. Team members quickly began praying and contacting friends and supporters to pray that the medicines so vital to our ministry would not be confiscated by customs. Upon arrival at El Salvador International Airport, we quickly consolidated all our medicines into four suitcases, each one carried by an individual member of our team. Miraculously, we were passed through customs immediately with no difficulty. We wasted no time loading our cases and ourselves into a waiting bus before they could change their minds and hit the road for the city of Awachapan, about 90 miles away. The guide and advisor for our mission was Brian Doverly, coordinator of Salvadoran Mission Projects. Our home away from home for the week was the Hotel Al Altillo, a place which can best be described as adequate, but definitely Spartan. Breakfast and supper each day were in the hotel restaurant, and the food was excellent. Various team members led morning and evening devotions as we sat around the table. The day after our arrival was Sunday, since most Salvadoran churches have their services in late afternoon. We boarded a bus that morning for a tour of western El Salvador. First stop was the Mayan ruin of Tajumal in the town of Chachuapa. The name Tajumal tells you all you need to know about why it was built. It means the pyramid where people were burned. Next stop was a delightful restaurant on a coffee plantation in the Apaneca Mountains. After a delicious dinner, we were given a guided tour by the proprietor before once again boarding the bus to travel the Highway of Flowers through the mountains to the ancient town of Ataka, which has in the past few years reinvented itself as a tourist attraction. On weekends, throngs of people crowd the streets and enjoy a Sunday afternoon in the Central Park. Vendors line the sidewalks with food, clothing, and tourist trinkets while young lovers inhabit a world of their own, as young lovers everywhere have always done. The name El Salvador, by the way, means the Savior. Most Salvadorans are religious, and there are many beautiful churches. Yet the deep spiritual need of many of the Salvadoran people is sometimes revealed. 
In the late afternoon, when it was time to go to church, the team gathered at New Jerusalem, the largest of the five Methodist churches in Awachapan, where Pastor Chris assisted Juan de Dios, Bishop of El Salvador, in serving communion. El Salvador is the smallest and most densely populated country in Central America. It is modern in many ways, and the people are quite Americanized. Yet more than half live on less than two dollars per day. The city of Ahuachapan is situated at an altitude of about 2,600 feet, higher than Lookout Mountain, and surrounded by mountains and deep valleys. Salvadoran cities are divided into neighborhoods or communities called colonias. The community selected for our mission was Colonia Gloria, one of the poorest sections of Ahuachapan. La Colonia Gloria is at the very edge of town, strung out down a steep hillside along an unpaved road so steep and rough that most of the time it is accessible only to four-wheel drive vehicles. At the bottom of the hill is a lovely small valley with pasture land and a swift flowing stream, the Rio Marino, where many residents of the Gloria community bathe and do their laundry. The people of Colonia Gloria can go to Awachapan by walking up the hill or by climbing this staircase of approximately 300 steps to the town level. Almost at the bottom of the hill is a small concrete block building with a tin roof, Gloria Church, the newest and smallest of Awachapan's Methodist churches. The pastor is the Reverend Gloria Lopez Martinez. The steps up to the church are tree roots and the floor is dirt. This was to be the site of the children's Bible school. Just up the hill from the church was the site for the clinic, the home of Ana Maria Martinez, mother of Pastor Gloria. On Monday morning, it was time to go to work. The first day at the clinic was a bit chaotic as the staff learned to handle the flow of patients, dealing with physical conditions such as the oppressive heat, confined space, and the lack of sanitary water, getting medicines and supplies organized, and the necessity of having to explain everything through translators. But by the second day, as the staff members began to adapt to their roles, things began to smooth out. Gatekeepers Marcelo Alejandro and Emerson Castillo controlled the flow of patients into the compound. Johanna de Dios, a nurse and the wife of Bishop Juan de Dios, did preliminary screening, which included checking blood pressures and temperatures. She was assisted by student nurse Catherine Lopez, the 16-year-old daughter of Pastor Gloria. Kelly Mollis, a registered nurse and wife of team leader Chris Mollis, interviewed patients, wrote up their medical histories, and attended to routine first aid procedures. Patients were then passed along to nurse practitioner Louise Jenkins for diagnosis and treatment. A variety of conditions were observed and treated, but the most common problem was intestinal parasites, probably from drinking the local water. Some very sick patients were treated, including this baby girl who had chicken pox, and a lady with severe rheumatoid arthritis in both hands. Team member Jason Denson discovered a previously unknown aptitude, and after a slightly difficult first day as he learned how to organize his workflow, quickly developed into an accomplished pharmacy technician. Pastor Chris Mollis added spiritual care to the team's physical care of the patients, praying with each one individually before they left the clinic. The team also brought a large suitcase full of used eyeglasses donated by members of sponsoring churches. And with the help of Brian Dubberly, Jay Phipps set up an optical clinic where they conducted basic vision tests and dispensed glasses. His clients appeared to be very pleased with their new eyewear. Between clients, he even managed to find time to hold a few babies. With a full waiting room every day, 136 patients in all were seen at the clinic, ranging from a tiny but healthy three-week-old baby girl weighing less than five pounds to an 82-year-old man. Most patients were happy and thankful for the care and attention they received. 
but of course there's always someone who's just not a happy camper. The Children's Bible School started off with a small group that Monday morning, but attracted a larger turnout in the afternoon. In El Salvador, schools have two sessions each day, with some children attending in the morning and some in the afternoon. The Bible School was directed by Janice Gallagher, who brought many years of vacation Bible School experience to the mission. She was assisted by her husband, Charles Gallagher, and by Lori Roberts, also an experienced Vacation Bible School worker. Hal Brooker, who is a teacher and coach, was a natural for the job of Recreation Director. The team was also assisted by National Church workers Jonathan Martinez and Fernando Pineda, and also by one of the mothers, Mara Trejo. Throughout the week, Bible School attendance continued to grow. The children listened raptly to Bible stories read by Jonathan. participated in singing lively choruses. Colored Bible scenes with crayons. <laughs> Learn to make things with homemade Play-Doh. <laughs> and enjoyed lots of fun activities for all ages, from blowing bubbles to throwing the frisbee, and to some impromptu but very competitive football. We call it soccer. The biggest problem with the football game was keeping the ball out of the mud puddle, and of course the all-important snack time. It was a week of fun and much more for the children as they learned about a Savior who loved them and died for their sins. And for the people of La Colonia Gloria who were shown the love of Jesus by people who had come thousands of miles from another land just to minister to them personally. Sending ten people to El Salvador was not cheap. We could have just sent the money. But we went because we wanted to give them something better than money. We went to give them ourselves. That's what building bridges is all about. Not building new or better bridges for El Salvador's highways, but building bridges to the people of El Salvador, to the people of La Colonia Gloria, that they might know the love of Jesus. This is the reason we went. Perhaps this is the reason you should go too.